What's up, YouTube? Okay, so you guys have been asking me. I'm finally gonna tell you about scanners. How to set them up, or at least how I set them up. You don't have to do it my way. You can obviously do it your way, but I'm still gonna show you how it is that I do it. A lot of times you ask me how is it that I know about the stock before it actually gets onto YouTube. So hey, this is on YouTube. But I'm gonna tell you guys how I find it, what it is that I do in particular, but not only that, just because I find something, does that mean I get into it right away? Mm, well, you know what? Yeah, in some cases I might. But either way, we're gonna discuss all that right now. So I already have my page set up. Now this is on Think or Swim, all right, by TD Ameritrade. Uh, if you go on the top, you got all these different options, your monitor trade, scan. That's what you wanna do, you wanna scan, all right? So now there's Option Hacker, I'm horrible with options, still learning, but I'm still horrible at options. I'm not trying to give you guys any kind of information or any kind of advice on something that I know nothing about. So with trading stocks, you can actually set this up. You can add all these different types of filters. You got stock, option, fundamental, study, and pattern. Now when you go into these, I got three of them set up. So for stocks, I always keep it at a mark. All right, now you could do any of the other options that are here. Net change, open, PE ratio, uh, market cap. So for me, I keep it simple. Um, let's say, say with my marks, what I do is I look for stocks between 10 cents and 30 bucks. This changes every day. It just depends on what I'm trying to trade, how much I'm trying to trade, if I'm trying to do something that's maybe gonna be a swing trade, which I generally don't like because I like to just get in, get out, don't hold anything overnight. Except for Neo, Sonny, I know you're watching this, whatever. All right, Neo's the one thing that I'm actually holding. But aside from that one, uh, so either way, I go ahead and I do my 10 cents to 30. All right, now the next filter that I have is a volume. Now for volume, like I mentioned in my last video, it's very important to have volume I don't like to trade anything that's running on low volume because I might end up getting stuck especially with the amount of shares that I purchase so I keep it between a million and 200 million you can set it to 2 billion 2 trillion whatever you want but either way I mean, <laughs> there's not really a lot of stocks where you'll see this much volume there have been recently um, like it's it's very rare though so either way 1 million to 200 million now Price change, uh, the studies that I, that I have set up, there's so many different types of studies, all right? But I keep price change. And it doesn't have to be closed. It could be from closed, it could be from open. I like to do from closed or from open. To be honest with you, I've done both and they turn up with the same results, okay? So let's just do from closed for now. Uh, is at least 10% greater than 20 bars ago, all right? So now 20 bars, it just depends on the ticks. Uh, 10% you can put 20% it just depends on how much of a, a run you're trying to look for in terms of stocks maybe you want to get in super early so you'll keep it at 10% maybe you want to just wait until something actually spikes up a bit more which I like to do so I look for things that are about 10% sometimes most times 20% and then of course uh, on the day show so one thing that I was messing up with before I didn't really pay too much attention to this. I thought that maybe it'll show you like, you know, 10 on this page and then 10 on another page. No. So when you have 10, that's all it's gonna show you is 10. You're gonna miss out on a lot. So choose a thousand, choose 2000, whatever. At least this way you get to see a whole range of stocks and it's gonna be within that 10 cents to $30, all right? So obviously stocks, but you can choose whatever you want. Uh, sorted by open, descending pattern, uh, you can choose ascending, but I prefer descending because, you know, you want to make sure that you see the largest stock right in front of you. All right, so once you have that set up, you hit scan. Now, you have requested a very large number of symbols. Damn it. Yes. Of course I want to see it. All right, so it takes time, but look. Okay, so this stock, obviously, I missed out on that. Uh, this was yesterday, but it went up 166,566.67%. However, would I have traded it? No. Why? Because the volume is only 139 
thousand. Okay, so that is very very small for me. All right, but uh, you look at the next one, also very very small. Then you got STHC. All right, now this one ran up two hundred and seven point seven five percent. 54 million shares traded. Now another thing you can do if you want to just uh, avoid the lower volume, let's do this, because that was my mistake. I thought it was a million, but it really was 100,000. Uh, so there we go. Back to something more realistic. Now, 54 million, that's definitely something I would have traded. So I'll go in here, I'll put this in, STHC. Then the next one you've got, give me power. I've actually traded this stock uh, a couple times before. Uh, it's not bad. OBSV, I traded that last week. It was pretty good. SENS, I traded this before. Uh, actually, I traded this on Friday, so this was pretty good. Friday meaning yesterday, uh, January 15th. So this one was really good. You know what? I'll add this one on here too. Now, when I add these stocks in here, I can go back to my charts. I look at, uh, not the flexible grid, charts. Now let's go to SENS. See that? This was beautiful. So I traded this one on Friday. I made on it. Awesome. Congratulations to me. But this one I traded because volume was high. All right. If they uh, had lower volume, I probably wouldn't have done it. All right. SENS had a 243 million. So I actually went a little bit above this. Yeah, but either way, it went up a, a little bit above that. So 203 million. Of course, I'm going to trade that. Uh, OBSV. Let's check this one out. This one had. 142 million shares you go back to the charts you check out obsv massive run and this one you can see there was a previous gap on a daily chart now i actually learned something speaking with a friend of mine uh just last night about volume and about the uh, about the gaps so there's different types of uh trading platforms that'll actually show you um volume or or actually amounts traded during these gaps. But trading uh, charts, that's gonna be another video that I'm gonna be talking about. Now, uh, let's go back to what we we're saying here. So if I go back to the scanner, all these things here, if you want, you can even adjust it over here by volume. These are the most, uh, well, the minimal. Then you got the max. SNDL, I did not trade this stock on Friday, even though the volume was massive. And a friend of mine actually asked me if this one was gonna be good. And I told him, that it has a tendency of running up after hours or pre-market and then it tanks right at market open and if you go back and you look at this i think i already have it in here yes yeah, so you already had it in my list that's pretty much what it did so we will go to the 20 it runs up pre-market or after hours and then it, it dips runs up pre-market opens and then it dips so but either way volume on this is great so liquidity here is great which means i would definitely have traded it but i've already traded this one before so i know the pattern i know the way it plays out and i know that this level here is already a previous uh level of resistance so which was something i told you about with the uh trend lines resistance levels support levels in a previous video so you got to make sure that you put everything into play. Trading is not just based on one thing or the other. Trading is everything put together to help you make your own decisions. So yeah, when I do these scanners, I like to do them. I start hearing about them later on. So what I'll do is uh, I'll trade the stock or I'll see the stock. Then what I'll do is I'll check their news. Now you can go in here and you can see news articles. Ah, shelf offering. There are some of you guys that I speak with on a personal level, and I did tell you guys that you can look up in SEC filings, and you can find out if there's anything in there like shelf offerings or um, public offerings, right? You always want to make sure that they got good balance sheets, but you always want to look out for these offerings. Now, previously, it was stated that these guys had an offering that was supposed to come out for $50 million. Not that bad. But $400 million, this company is not even worth $400 million, all right? But either way, that's going to come up in our video for SEC filings. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get into that there. Okay, so 
this is pretty much it man scanners is very straightforward it's very simple you can control it uh, you can actually take out a lot of these here you can go into your settings and you can make it to something that's a little more customizable or you can customize it to something that just fits what you want all right I have all these set up for me but you can add different things in here for you it's it's all up to you it's your comfort level all right so make sure that if you're gonna be doing this uh, obviously you're doing your own due diligence I don't mind putting out these videos and helping you guys out and showing you the way that I trade and how I'm comfortable trading my styles my strategies might be different you may not be comfortable doing the same things that I do and that's perfectly okay all right but find your comfort zone and play by that all right so I'm gonna see now the next video that I'm gonna make uh, I believe should be on something you guys would need to know let's do PE ratios all right so we'll talk about that one in the next video I'll see you guys then